Okay, so I made a review video of the Topeak MTX trunk bag a little while ago and just recently I had a question uh, in regards to the pros and cons of this, which I didn't really go over last video. I uh, hadn't been using it for all that long at, the, at that time. Whereas now, you know, after a bit of use, I'll uh, list some pros and cons of the of the bag. So let's start with uh, some positives about it. One positive, or the main positive, I guess, is the amount of space this thing has. I mean, you've got a decent amount of room in the actual bag itself in here. Um, but then, you know, for daily commuting use, it's, it's fine. But then if you actually... You can fit a whole bunch of crap in these side carriers here. Yeah, it's hard to get a real scale on how, how much you can put in here, but I fit a pair of like work boots in one side with still a bit of room to fit other junk in. And then you got, you know, you got that on both sides. So you just have a really large amount of room to put stuff in. I mean, if you're, if you have too much stuff to put in these, then you're gonna have a pretty heavy load on your bike. Obviously for touring and stuff, it's probably, those guys carry a fair bit of stuff, but, um, this bike's probably not really the best for carrying really heavy loads anyway. It's just a, the old Reed Osprey Elite. So yeah, the next pro would be the uh, attachment mechanism. It's uh, really, really quick and easy. I mean, I suppose it's slightly fiddly to get in to line up the sort of dovetail on the bag there. Focus. I mean, basically you got to line up the dovetail on the bottom of here with the opposite mating slot in the top of the rack. But yeah, so you, that slides in. You know, bam, locks in, locks in really securely. No no straps or tying anything or unclipping anything. Well, not really unclipping, you're clipping this one thing. So yeah, that's, a, that's another good time saver. To be honest, I can't think of a whole lot of more pros for it. I mean, the thing just works. It works quite well, so space and ease of use, I guess, are the main main pros for this thing. I mean, it's quite simple. It doesn't do that much. <laughs> and you don't expect it to, it's just a saddlebag. Uh, okay, onto some negatives. So I guess the main negative, and it's not that bad, but you have to have the top done up if you're in order to carry it with this top handle. You know, is that really much of a negative? Probably not really, but the way I use it, for me, I like to store my wallet in here and keys when I'm riding along so that they don't fly out. I don't really trust having them on the outside here. So I like them being in the bag. So that means when I get home or when I go into work or whatever, I'm carrying this through the door with me. I need to get my keys and my security pass out for work, which is inside the bag. So I virtually have to put it down um, because I obviously can't carry it with the top open. It'll just flap around everywhere or the bottom will, will hang all over the place. Another con is it does come with a shoulder strap, which attaches to the outside, as you can see here and here. Sorry, shadows, ter terrible lighting in the shed here. And that's all well and good. And you can carry it and have the top open at the same time. But where do you put this when you, there's nowhere to tuck this. It's not going to get in the way while you're riding. Well, not that it would get in the way, but you'd have to awkwardly fold it out of the way somewhere, you know. I don't know, it just seems awkward to have a shoulder strap on here. One last negative really is the fact that it doesn't come with a... Uh, the thing cost a hundred bucks or more, a hundred and something dollars. And I bought this rain bag extra just because it fits it. It's designed to fit it perfectly. I suppose you could get some sort of other plastic bag or something that could actually fit over it but so if you're riding in any weather which you would be with any commuter bike situation in general if you're pretty committed to it you know you'd want to be riding in all sorts of weather you don't want water ingressing through here because this isn't really waterproof it's more of a you know it's sort of the not what do you call that material ripstop nylon of something i don't know you know a bit of water will, won't just penetrate straight through it but really if you've got any decent rain you're going to need a bag that goes around the outside let me just show you how that goes on because I didn't show that in the last video. Basically you've got the, the main section in the middle and you've got these two sort of ears on the side which go around the saddlebags if they happen to be down. So you know with the waterproof bag you get to ride along with this weird alien, alien egg looking thing on the back. <laughs> it's not too glamorous but it'll keep your stuff dry anyway. I can't actually remember how much extra I paid for this. So probably about 20 bucks, 20 to 30 bucks so not exactly the cheapest extra when the bag originally cost, you know, 100 and 100 to 120 originally anyway. All right, so one last thing I'll show is how the, uh, I actually had a question from the same guy, uh, how much foot clearance you have from when your foot's on the pedal here to the bag. So I'll fold the bag down and show you how much clearance you get. So this ties under here. This is really awkward to do with one hand. It doesn't really tie, you sort of loop it around the bottom hook. 
like that. And you just got this little button thing here. With two hands, this is fine, but with one hand, I can't really do it. Um, you know, you just pull that cord out where you press the button and it holds the bottom of your pannier to the, or saddlebag, what do we call it, to the bottom of the frame. So anyway, this is how much foot clearance you have when you're, uh, when you're pedaling with the bags extended. So there you go. As you can see, when your foot comes up around, you've got a bit of clearance there. And I've got size, size 10 feet, roughly. So yeah, as you pedal around, your foot comes up and you're sort of pedaling like that. I've never ever noticed my leg hit it. I never even thought about it until someone asked me the question. So and I've never had my foot hit it because my feet are clipped in. You might have a bit of an issue if you don't clip your feet in and your feet bounce around a little bit, but with clipped in pedals, you know, it's, it looks kind of close there, but I've literally never hit my foot on it. Yeah, so it's just really not an issue. You know, if you've got bigger feet, you're also going to have a bigger bike, so your foot's going to be, you know, relatively further away, so you'd probably have the similar clearance, even if you do have bigger feet. Assuming, you know, if you've got bigger feet, you're taller than me, and you'll have a bigger bike. If you're a short person with big feet, you might have issues. <laughs> but yeah, so that's my uh, second review of the Topeak MTX Trunk Bag DXP, I think the name is. Hope you enjoyed. See you guys next time.